snack Me and you gonna have a little I am here today to actually review an entire series or at least the entirety of the books that are already out in the series. There's one more to come. I have here the first three books. I've actually read the first four but I haven't got my physical copy of the fourth one yet because I audiobooked this and that is the Memoirs of Lady Trent series which is by Marie Brennan. This series starts with A Natural History of Dragons. The second one is called A Tropic of Serpents. The third one is called The Voyage of the Basilisk, and the fourth one is called In the Labyrinth of the Drakes. I have to say, I went into this not knowing if it was going to be a series I'd enjoy, because all that I'd ever really heard about this was that it was a kind of fantasy of manners series, which I don't always enjoy. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This one I particularly loved. I'd also heard that there were dragons in these books but they were not treated as mystical creatures, they were more treated as scientific creatures for study and I wasn't sure if that was going to be something I'd enjoy or not. I thought maybe it would, obviously, which is why I picked up the first one, but man, I loved these. If you guys have ever read any Gail Carragher and you've enjoyed it, I would hugely recommend that you check out Marie Brennan because I think that they have a very similar style and I think that the two of them are both doing very similar things with their books even though the story and the characters are completely different. I think that they both have really strong lead female characters who are just utterly fantastic and also they're just really, really witty. So these books, all three of them, are fantastic. The fourth one as well. And I gave three of these books five stars and one four stars. So, so far this series has been incredibly strong for me, which is why I'm doing a whole series review because I read all of these so quickly and so closely together that I could actually fit them into one review by the time I got round to filming it, and I thought I might as well. Let's start with book one in the series. In book one you get introduced to the main character, Lady Trent, but in this book she is not Lady Trent, she is actually called Isabella Camhurst. And Isabella is a young girl at the very start of this who has a fascination with dragons, which is not that unusual because the world that she lives in does have dragons not as commonplace but they are definitely there and there are native dragons to most of the countries in this world. Now she lives in a place called Skeland which is not too dissimilar from England in kind of a Victorian-esque society so some of the troubles that she faces within this are because she is female and of course that is typical of the time period like Victorian Edwardian England. Females had a harder time getting published and being taken seriously and things like that and Isabella has a deep desire to not only work with dragons but also to study dragons. She finds them fascinating, she's read every book in her father's library about them and she genuinely just wants to study them. That's all she has a passion for. So as soon as she is old enough she talks to her father and they agree that she needs to find a man who will put up with her obsession and hopefully nurture it and this she does and then they end up going on a rather crazy adventure to another part of the world to study dragons. That's basically the premise of this book. The second, third and fourth books then take on different adventures themselves. So in the second book, which is Tropic of Serpents, we actually see her as she adventures to Vistrama, which is another place in the world. Um, and in this one, she encounters moolish swamp worms, which are quite swampy dragons. And she does a bit of research into those ones. In the third book, we see her as she goes to Eriga. And in Eriga, she actually voyages around the world in a ship called the Basilisk and she kind of takes on some of the sea creatures that she meets along the way, some of which happen to be serpentile creatures that might be related to dragons, and she wants to study that and find out whether they are or not. And then the final one, which is out at the moment, is called In the Labyrinth of Drakes, and this one, she goes to a kind of desert-like place, and there she studies the drakes in that country, and she actually ends up not only studying them, but also studying the draconian culture which is an ancient civilization from this world and a lot of people believe that they have been linked to dragons somehow but they're not really sure how and so in this book she's trying to find out a little bit more about how they might link. Going back to the first book in the series, one of the things I hugely hugely appreciate about not only this book but the entire series is that 
Isabella is a woman and it's very obvious that she is a woman from the way that she is looked down upon. She faces a lot of trials because of her gender and she faces a lot of problems because of her gender. She is expected to be a mother figure. She's expected to be a genteel woman who does not go traipsing around various different countries and places hunting or looking for dragons. She's not expected to do any of that. What she's expected to do is to just keep the peace and do what she's told. And she does not really enjoy doing that. Realistically, she's going to go against that. She's going to fight that system. And I love seeing that about her. She has a real fighting spirit. She's an absolute gem of a character and one you can hugely relate to and root for. I particularly liked the second book because in the second book it's where she talks about periods and she talks about a sense of abandonment and guilt over leaving her son while she goes off to adventure and find out about some of these dragons. She feels as though she is not fulfilling her duty or at least she's made to feel that way by society and she still does it. She still rebels against it and does what she has a passion for and I greatly admire that because I think, you know, Sometimes you've got to make hard decisions and I think she does that in this book and I think she does it for a reason. She does it because she's passionate and she believes in what she's doing and I fully support that. I really, really rooted for her in this book. So ratings wise, I gave these two, the first and second one, five out of five stars because I enjoyed them so immensely. I will also say the audiobook is fantastic. I've been listening to all of these on audio and that really, really enhanced my experience for them because the audiobook narrator was just fantastic. The other thing I will say is within each of the books, there are illustrations because Isabella is considered to be an artist and that's how she kind of manoeuvres her way onto the initial expeditions abroad is by saying that she will be the artist for their expedition and she will sketch some of the dragons and places that they go to. So you can see this is a statue from the draconian ruins that they found at one of the places. So although I did listen to the audiobooks, it's also great to have the physical books to read along because then you won't miss out on the illustrations within as well, which are all done by the same guy who did the illustrations on the covers. Todd Lockwood is absolutely fantastic. I might do a cover chat talking about some of his uh, cover designs soon because he's absolutely fabulous and I have really enjoyed the illustrations both within and on the covers. I think you'll all agree these covers are absolutely superb the whole way round. Just beautiful. This one as well is another gorgeous one. The third book in the series, The Voyage of the Basilisk, I gave four out of five stars, not because it was bad at all, just because it didn't quite live up to the previous two in terms of it wasn't as interesting in terms of plot. However, I will say that within this one, I think the exploration of gender is fascinating. I think she does something really interesting looking at different genders and how gender is perceived by people and whether there should be a gender, whether people need that gender, um, whether it's hindering people from stuff that they should be able to do regardless of gender. I think that was all kind of covered in this book really really well and I loved that so definitely enjoyed that side of it. The plot wasn't quite as interesting as the other two but it was still really really interesting so I gave this four out of five stars. And the final one in the Labyrinth of Drakes, I gave five out of five stars again. As I said, I'm so excited for book five to come out. I think it comes out 2017, so it'll be out sometime next year. But oh my goodness, this series is truly, truly spectacular. I just rooted for this character like I haven't for quite a long time with some other characters. She was a character I could connect with, I could admire, I could respect, I could really sympathise with and I could also laugh along with. She's quite funny, she's quite intelligent and that comes across as well in the books and genuinely I just adored this whole idea of her being a dragon naturalist, her being the one to go and fulfil her dreams, fulfil her destinies, become the explorer that she always wanted to be and the naturalist that she always dreamed of and seeing her realise her potential over the course of these memoirs is fantastic because of course each of these memoirs is written from the point of view of her looking back on her life and writing a memoir about it and so there are some moments where she puts in comments about how she is now and how she feels now compared to how she was then because of society and pressures and I really enjoy all of that commentary that she throws in. Marie Brennan is clearly a fantastic writer and I don't know why it took me so long to get to her series but I am incredibly thankful that I did finally get to it. 
I will also say I've been reading these kind of in part with Elizabeth and Chelsea whose channels are linked below. Both of them are fantastic ladies and together we've all been enjoying this series immensely. It's just been utterly fantastic to talk about and to be inspired by and to enjoy. So if you guys are looking for a kick-ass series with a fantastic female lead and if you're interested at all in science then this is certainly one I would hugely recommend. I loved them all. I gave this one five out of five stars as well and it's just a great series. Like cannot wait to see what happens in the next book. Also I'm just going to be really sad that it's over because I really really love this series so I hope she brings out something else after the fifth book in a new series. Um, I have her other series which is Midnight Never Come by her. Genuinely I really 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 would recommend that you guys check out Marie Brennan. Thank you all so much for watching. Do leave me all your comments down below about this series or any others you think I might enjoy which are similar. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again